And so we're very excited today uh, to present as part of our DKU Bound series of events, an introduction to the DKU Duke NUS Medicine Pathway. We are fortunate to have our colleagues and friends from Duke NUS who will be giving you a, a nice presentation on talking about the, the program, um, of course, the school, and and very importantly, you know, the application process. So you can learn a little bit more about the opportunity, but then also, if you do have an interest, how should you apply? Um, and you'll also get some nice, useful contact information if you're interested in learning more. All right. So at this point, we've got a group of folks from, from Duke NUS. Um, I'm going to hand the mic over, if you will, to Professor Ui who you will see there on your screen, I hope, who will kind of kick things off and maybe allow your colleagues, if you like, to introduce themselves at any point that you feel that makes sense. So please, the floor is yours. Thanks, Russell, uh, and Mark, thank you for the introduction and uh, welcome to this session. I'm going to share a bit about Duke NUS. I know you have all been admitted into the uh, special pathway at Duke Kun Shan coming to us thereafter. So I won't cover the pathway details, but we'll just share with you a bit about how we are going forward and how uh, Duke NUS figures in the whole equation of things, if that's okay with everybody. So for a start, um, my name is Lucian. I'm, I'm Chair of Surgery previously and Professor of Surgery in Sing Health, which is the partner hospital that runs the clinical program for Duke NUS. I presume my accent is okay for everybody. It's a Singaporean accent. Uh, if you can't hear me, please uh, indicate on the chat. I can still uh, change my accent a bit if you want me to. So I just have three questions to share with you uh, this evening. Uh, you are here primarily because you're on the CA program. So I presume you've thought about why being a doctor is important to you. So, but I'll just cover that a bit more because that's something that we'll be emphasizing in your time in uh, Duke Kun Shan as well, because that's part of the mentorship that we'll be providing for you on this pathway to continue to guide you and to uh, share with you what it takes to become a clinician in the end and hope that you'll continue the journey with us all through the four plus four years uh, coming forward. The next question, of course, is why Singapore? I know you're coming from different parts of the world now, from, from different parts like Kenya, from US and so on. It's interesting to see how you'll be going forward into a very Asian uh, university in Yukun Shan. And of course, when you come to Singapore, it's quite Asian still, but we have a very Western uh, background. And Russell, who has been to visit us some time back, will testify to that. We are quite international in, uh, in setup. And of course, most important to you is why Duke NUS when you finish with Duke Kun Shan uh, after four years. So those are my three questions that I'll be trying to address in this short session with you. Uh, and I will ask for your indulgence to let me take you through these three different questions. So the first thing, of course, is why be a doctor? And I think that's the important thing to think about. Um, we'll be continuously asking you this as we uh, meet you uh, throughout the mentorship program in your time in Duke Kun Shan. Uh, you'll be assigned a clinician mentor from Duke NUS, who will, although technically you're not a student with us yet, uh, the mentor will come from Duke NUS and will be guiding you in your four years in Duke Kun Shan. In terms of uh, why medicine, this is something you've got to think about as you go forward. Uh, for me, you know, there are several reasons why we would think about wanting to become a doctor. And I put down the seven Ps here, which you can see uh, listed on the right-hand side. And this comes from the book that I've written about getting to medical school. And it talks about the important things that you want to um, think about in terms of choosing a career. And for medicine, what is most critical is passion and purpose. And those two will stand you in good state as you look forward to a long-term career because being a doctor doesn't just stop at work. In fact, at home, you're still a doctor and if you see a patient on the street, uh, someone accident, for example, you'll still be attending to the person as a doctor yourself. So in that sense, passion and purpose drives the long-term direction. Now, on the left-hand side, I'm showing you what was a global study some years back by the Vaki Foundation. And they were asking people around the world what were the most respected occupations worldwide in their own countries. And you can see from the average rank, the highest was actually medicine. Being a doctor was the most respected occupation worldwide, uh, followed a bit further back by lawyers and engineers. 
So if you really think about it, um, medicine is a career that you really can get into if you want to um, serve a purpose and your passion is to help others, that's really a useful thing to go into. Now, there are different pathways into medicine. Uh, most of you come from countries that have a pathway into undergraduate medicine as well. And Africa does an undergraduate medicine program. Um, but in the US, this is a graduate entry requirement. So you must do a first degree in a university before going on into the MD program as a postgraduate studies. So in a sense, um, Duke NUS follows the same pathway. You need to do your first degree in Duke Kunshan and then come to us in the MD program after you finish and graduate with the bachelor's degree. So that is the way that we'll be focusing on this. Now, in terms of uh, differences between undergraduate and graduate entry, graduate entry programs are all four years long. There are two years of preclinical where you'll be spending time in the labs, in the lecture halls to learn things before you come on to clinical rotations in the hospitals and the clinics uh, where we'll be seeing more of you uh, talking to patients and learning from them. But in Duke NUS, we have a peculiar design. It is modeled after Duke in Durham, so that we are very similar in how the structure is. And here you will see a difference in terms of how we craft our curriculum to be in four separate years, where the preclinical years are now condensed into one year, where the first year is just pure preclinical. And that frees up one year in the third year for us to explore scholarly activity, where you will learn to explore areas of interest peculiar to you yourself on a very customized type of format. Uh, if you are so inclined and you want to do something deeper, you can do a PhD in your third year and extend it into a four-year program for a PhD to do a combined MD-PhD program, which uh, many of our students do embark upon if they're very keen on becoming a clinician scientist in the long term. So this is the popularity about the Duke NUS the medical curriculum, similar to the Duke curriculum in the US. Now, this is probably interesting to you. I, I'm sure some of you may have visited us before on holidays, but some may not have come uh, this far to the east. But uh, I will share with you about what Singapore is like to give you an idea of the flavor of what it's about so that you at least understand uh, where studying in Singapore will be like in the long term. And if you're in Kunshan, we're only about four hours away from Shanghai. So if you do travel, you can come and visit us whenever you're in Duke Kunshan. In, in terms of location, the crosshair red lines mark where we are. We're at the southernmost tip of the peninsula of Malaya or Malaysia. And really, it's the lower end of uh, what we would call Southeast Asia. Uh, and it's central to the area where you can see Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. So we are actually in quite an interesting area of Indochina. And you will see lots of things, uh, different cultural experiences, and so on. So we are quite multiracial. We are quite multicultural. But our population is fairly small for our land size. We're about 5.6 million people only. And we are largely English speaking. So if you come to us from English speaking background, that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, I show you the picture at the bottom with four different races in the four kids with four different races. And that's quite true for most of our school and uh, social activities as well, because we are quite widespread in terms of racial distribution. But in terms of um, where we are, the picture on the left is our city center. And you can see we are not quite Asian, we are almost cosmopolitan in the sense, we're quite modern and quite huge. Uh, and we do rank highly in various areas worldwide. And we have high scores in education, in health, in safety, and so on. Um, so if you do come and visit us, you notice that the streets are always lit 24-7, nighttime. There's no such thing as a dark street at night. And in fact, if you want to go running at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning, it's very, very safe. So there really isn't any issues with the uh, safety and so on. And education wise, we are ranked also very highly. This is a picture that I love to, to show because it, it shows you what Singapore is like. And this is where we are. Um, having been to most parts of the world, most things shut down by 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. And you really can't go anywhere after hours, but here you can. Although if you're studying with us in Duke NUS, you will be studying pretty hard although you have time in the weekends to still go and explore a bit of the city area. Uh, that's our skyline, uh, the waterfront, uh, where lots of museums, uh, eating places, restaurants, cafes, and so on. So it, it's a nice place to live and a nice place to, to also study. In terms of healthcare, I thought I should share this with you because 
you know, when you study in a particular area of interest, you want to go to a university or to a country where what you study is of relevance and also of a certain ranking status. And here I'm sharing with you several indicators of where healthcare in Singapore stands at the moment. On the left-hand side, the Bloomberg Healthcare Efficiency ranks Singapore as the second most efficient healthcare system in the world. And in terms of costing, we are costing so low that we have been uh, expecting to spend only about 4% of our GDP every year on healthcare. And this compares quite drastically with the US where you're spending about 17 to 18% of GDP, if I'm not wrong, Russell, correct me if I'm wrong. But the US spends about 18% of the GDP on healthcare. So there's a big difference in how we would be spending our dollars on healthcare provision. And yet we still provide first world quality care. The WHO ranked us based on healthcare systems worldwide as number six in the world. And that we are quite proud of. When Newsweek in 2019 first did the ranking of hospitals worldwide, Singapore General, which is where I'm working in at the moment as a cancer surgeon, was ranked number three in the world after Mayo and Cleveland Clinic. And that was something that we were a bit surprised uh, and I would say pleasantly surprised because it put us in a good stead. And um, it reinforces the healthcare system that I'm familiar with, that uh, we do provide quality care to our patients. And if you do join us in Duke NUS, you'll be part of the system where you'll be spending a lot of time in Singapore general because that's where Duke NUS is located. And SGH is our primary partner for clinical delivery of education. Now the healthcare system in Singapore is a bit interesting because we do have three separate uh, divisions of the country. So this is sectoral healthcare uh, or regional healthcare as you would call it in some countries. In the Eastern sector, including the central area is SingHealth. SingHealth is where Duke NUS is the partner university for, and it's also where I practice. So SingHealth happens to be the largest healthcare cluster in the country. And we cater to all our VIPs, our prime minister, ministers, and presidents using health as the base for healthcare. So it's the Ministry of Health flagship cluster in the sense. And there are two other clusters that serve the population in the central and western region as well. Now, a bit about where you would go after you graduate. Um, you know, while you're crafting your time in Duke Kunshan to experience the Asian lifestyle, what China is, China is to some extent, very Asian and less international, less cosmopolitan. But Singapore is a good mix of West and East in the sense. So we, we do have a good mix of both. Uh, and when you come and join us, you will find that our healthcare system is actually integration of the British healthcare system from the past and the newer US system that we have embraced uh, in our training programs in the last decade. But we also have very many surgeons and physicians who train in Asian countries to bring Asian practices into the equation. And in many aspects of healthcare, Asian centers like in Korea and Japan do drive the forefront in things like robotic and MRS surgery, for example. So there are things that we are trying to amalgate in a small country of ours to share the best in terms of healthcare to provide you the training that you need. So if you are with us in the NUS after you finish the Kunshan, You'll be spending time in the first year after graduation as a house officer. This is the time when you are registered as a professional doctor. You will go through life as a junior physician in the hospitals in the US, we call them interns. Um, you spend three months, sorry, three rotations of four months each in medicine, in surgery, and in something else. And when you finish that, you then go on to either becoming a family physician or going to advanced training or residency programs like in the US before becoming a specialist. For Duke NUS, when you come and join us, we do expect you to stay on for some time. There is a requirement to stay on for another five, six years thereafter with us to enhance your training so you become a qualified specialist thereafter. Now, why Duke NUS? What's the proposition to you? And I know some of you have applied and some of you are keen to apply to the Conditional Pathway Program. So the Conditional Pathway Program looks at students who are admitted into our partners, in this case, Duke Kunshan. Once you have applied to Duke Kunshan and you have been accepted, which you all have been, you are then free to apply to Duke NUS for the Conditional Admissions Pathway. And what that entails is that we will be, in terms of guiding you through your time in Duke Kunshan, sharing with you experiences, providing mentors to you, uh, 
offering programs to help you with preparation for med school and so on. So I know Mark mentioned that there's no pre-health pre-med program in Duke Kun Chan, uh, but the Duke NUS pathway allows us to come in and guide you to some extent, to prepare you to some extent for the pre-health component of it. So what's the value proposition from Duke NUS? So firstly, like Kun Chan, Duke is one of our parents. Uh, so NUS is a local university, is ranked quite highly top 11 in the world based on QS ranking and top in Asia. And Duke, of course, comes across the 10 best medical schools in the US. So Duke and NUS have partners uh, since 2005 to form this new medical school in Singapore as their first international outreach. And the second one, of course, is Duke Kun Chan, where you are now. Now, the aim of the school was to was interesting because I was part of the team that started looking at this in 2005, and it wasn't to create a new medical school. That wasn't the intent. It was to create a new school that could produce a different kind of clinician. And here, we're looking at being people from diverse backgrounds like yourself, from all parts of the world, who have the potential to go further in terms of becoming outstanding clinical leaders in the future, be it in education, in innovation, in science, and so on. And we want people with compassion and passion who can come and join us in the long term. What this means in a cartoon form I've drawn for you here to see will be first and foremost, all our graduates will become clinicians first. The program over four years will prepare you to be clinician just like any other MD program around the world. Okay? That's first and foremost. On top of that, the special third year study activity programs that we, I mentioned to you earlier allows us to groom you based on your first degree uh, in Kun Chan, in whatever specialty you choose to have, to grow into something different, reinforced by your third year of study activity in Duke NUS. So for example, if you are someone who is always dynamic, charismatic, you can stand in front of a group of people and say, follow me and they will all follow you then you know, we can groom you to become the clinician first clinician leader and start new services, new programs in healthcare and so on. If you're someone who's nurturing, supportive, you, know, you like to grow others, you help, like to teach and help uh, nurture people, then of course you can become a clinician first clinician educator, help to train the next generation of doctors going forward. If you're someone who likes science, you're inquisitive, you are meticulous, you like to make sure that things work well, get the results from your experiments and so on, you're obsessive about things, then becoming a clinician first new scientist may be the way to go for you. And for those of you who are so inclined, the PhD will definitely help if you want to, go to become a clinician scientist in the long term. Some of you out there may be entrepreneurial. You know, I, I know of many young individuals who have got interests that are way beyond what we can teach you in university. You're divergent thinkers, you think out of the box, you like to use your hands to build things, create things, then perhaps maybe become a clinician first clinician innovator, design things that can be used in healthcare, apps on the handphone for patients to use, devices for implantation in surgery, and so on. So these are all potentials for you going forward if you do come to Duke NUS, uh, where we will groom you to be clinician first clinician plus, and the plus can be any of those five different spokes that you see over here. So this is the summary of where your long-term aspirations can lead you to. And these are the five different job scopes that you're entering in terms of your long-term career pathway. You can obviously be major in one and minor in others if you so choose. In my own personal career, I've done all five at different stages of my career. I can tell you it's very, very interesting in terms of uh, what you engage on a daily basis, who you interact with, and what is most rewarding is the outcome that you see uh, in terms of how it impacts the healthcare system in your patients, in your colleagues, and your students that come after you. So it's, it's a very rewarding career in the long term. And hence, I'm here to share with you uh, something that I think you will enjoy if you have the same passion and the same purpose as well. A bit of a summary. I, I know it's still very early on for you. You haven't even started in Duke Kun Chan yet. So your first four years in Duke Kun Chan will be where you're focused on. But when you come to us, this is a summary of the four years that you'll be spending time in Duke and US. And the four years will be quite interesting. The first year is the preclinical year, the, what we call the pre-clerkship, where you spend time learning about the human body and behavior. And of course, we teach you how to talk to others, how to uh, generate responses from patients, how to build trust, 
uh, the softer skills that you need to engage uh, in terms of patient care and your colleagues in the healthcare system. And we'll teach you how to examine and look for clinical signs as well. And all this is done in the first year in preparation for you to go into your clinical clerkship year in year two, where this is the first time you feel like a real doctor. You put on your white coat, carry your stethoscope, attend clinics, attend the wards, go to operating theatre, speak to patients like a junior doctor almost. And it's always one-to-one. -one. So here you'll be going through call rotations in surgery, in medicine, in pediatrics, and so on. And each rotation gives you the experience to try different specialties and to see patients with different conditions uh, as they pertain to where they are being treated in. The third year I shared with you earlier was a special year for you to learn about your clinician plus potential. And this is where you will learn to groom yourself to become one of the five spokes I spoke to you about. And a lot depends also on what you have studied in your first four years of your undergraduate program. So in Duke Kunshan, depending on what you want to learn and study and what you have been doing, uh, you might want to extend that into your third year in Duke NUS and you can obviously choose projects that you are familiar with in topics or areas of interest that you want. Or you can choose to explore different areas altogether and that's totally free for you to choose. In the final year, the fourth year is when you return back to clinical medicine and here we bring you through the advanced core rotations uh, in family medicine, in orthopedic surgery, emergency medicine, and critical care. And you're back to seeing patients again before you wrap up with the student in practice program where you are spending time as a junior doctor but haven't graduated yet. And that's before your transition into full practice thereafter. I mentioned to you the PhD program. For those of you who are inclined to pursue science to a deeper degree, uh, we have PhD programs in many different areas. I won't go deeper into this, but if you go to our website, you can check out the PhD programs that are available. And you can choose to extend your third year of scholarly activity into a PhD component, which is usually four years long, and then return to clinical practice in your final year for your fourth year routine. I mentioned briefly about Sing Health being the largest healthcare group. It's important because the size of the healthcare group determines the material that you can learn from. Unlike other areas of specialty where you can learn from the classroom or from the lab from tutorials, in clinical practice, you learn from your patients. If there's no patient, there's no learning. So the wider the patient population you have, the wider the spectrum of diseases that you see, the better your experience will be. And the larger the cluster that you have in terms of healthcare provision, the better your exposure will be. So in terms of Duke NUS partnership with Sing Health, it's the largest healthcare group, you'll be seeing 42 different specialties across the spectrum of healthcare. And it's the largest concentration of any kind of facility in the country and in the region as well. So that's where you will learn most in terms of clinical exposure. Thereafter, I mentioned about residency program. A lot of our programs here that you see are actually accredited by the US in terms of ACGME. Uh, this is ACGME International, which came to Singapore to set up the first ACGMAI program. And you can see the specialties that are listed here, which I won't cover yet because this will be you doing this after eight years of your studies. Okay. Now, maybe to share with you a bit about our population, just like Duke Kunshan, we are an international school, uh, Duke NUS, the international school. Uh, but by default, we take in the majority of Singaporeans, uh, but we do take in about one third of uh, internationals coming from various parts of the world. Uh, majority come from China, from America, from Canada. These are our top three countries that do come to attend school with us. And the map actually shows you the heat map of sorts of where they come from. The darkest blue is where we have the highest, highest concentration. So China, the US are very high. Uh, of course, Southeast Asia has got a huge number and followed by Canada and the rest of uh, the world. In terms of background, uh, do not be too worried. Uh, we are not similar to most medical schools where science has, has to be the required specialty before you come in. We take in all comers technically because we don't believe that science is the true requirement for entering medicine. What we believe is that the potential is important and the capacity to learn is important. So if you've proven yourself with a good GPA in your undergraduate studies uh, and you sit for the MCAT, which is an admissions test requirement for ME programs, and you can do the MCAT reasonably well 
then it doesn't matter which back program you've studied in the past. So you can see from our distribution here, about 25% of our students come from a non-science background. And a lot come from engineering, from the arts, of course, from finance, business. We've got lawyers coming into the program as well. We have some who have done philosophy and so on. So it's quite a diverse population group. And you find that sometimes the non-science students who enter medicine actually do much better than those who do science. Because science and art do have a place in medicine. It's not a pure science specialty. So you do want to see a mixture of both. Now, it's not a simple program to get into. So I don't want to uh, make it sound too simple to get into medical programs. MD programs are always hard to get into. It's very competitive. Uh, being on the conditional admissions program allows us to prepare you to some extent. It's not a guaranteed admission. It's conditional admission. But it allows us to help you, uh, if you like, transit from your undergraduate years into medicine and prepare you for a transition also. So in a way, it is helping you get into the program. In terms of admission requirements for the MD, uh, I'll just cover this briefly. So these are the MD program requirements which you will face when you are in your final year in Duke Kunshan. So even on the conditional admissions pathway program, you must meet these requirements as well. As I said, it's conditional admissions. So these are the things that we look at when you do come to us. A GPA that is of a reasonably competitive nature. And I know Duke Kunshan is an excellent university. If you've gone through it, your GPA should be a reasonable standard. And again, we do weightage of GPAs as well. So GPAs, as you know, are not equivalent worldwide. Better universities have may not necessarily give you a good GPA, but have a higher standing. So a GPA of four from the Laos University doesn't stand up to a GPA of three in a great university. So we do have some weightage in terms of where it comes from. The MCAT, number two, the MCAT is a requirement. So the MCAT preparation, uh, if you're on a CA program with us, uh, during a time in Duke Kunshan, we'll be running programs to help you with the MCAT preparation. This is done by our students who have been through the MCAT themselves. So they are sort of semi-experts who have been through it. They will guide you in preparation. We advise you if you're on the CA program in Duke Kunshan to start off maybe doing this in your second year or third year. So that you're free to do your projects in your final year. Uh, in terms of portfolio, here we expect to see some activity from you um, in terms of what will show your potential to be a clinician plus in the long term. Leadership potential, for example. Don't be shy in Duke Kunshan. Take up challenges that you can find. Be team leaders, uh, club presidents, and so on. So engage yourself in Duke Kunshan. It's a nice place to be in. Be as active as you can be and try and stand out if you can. Volunteer if you can. Because the volunteerism part is important. It lets us know if we have a real heart to serve others. Medicine is not a specialty where you go into to make money. It's a specialty where you're going to to serve. And I think that's important for us to see in you as well. So if you can show us that you do care for others in your voluntarism activities, that'd be very useful. Uh, as I said earlier, Duke Kunshan, Kunshan is very close to Singapore. If you do have summer breaks and you want to spend time coming to Singapore to spend time in the hospitals with our, our alumni, who are already doctors in the system, then of course, please let us know. We're happy to arrange for you as part of the conditional admissions program to spend time in the wards to be with our previous graduates from the school who will then show you what healthcare systems are like. And the rest of it, I won't cover this time. So this deadline will be shared with you nearer towards the time in your final year of Duke Kunshan. So I won't cover this now. And I want to stop here in terms of uh, time so that we can at least have some time for question and answer if Russell allows that to happen. Um, let me share a little bit more about the application pathway for those of you who are interested to apply for the CA pathway because I think what Prof. Lee has shared is for both the, is for really for the MD program when you are deciding to come into us um, after your undergraduate studies. Um, but let me share about the pathways um and also the timeline the processes that are involved so i understand that most of you have already been accepted to duke kunshan and um, we'll be starting soon with duke kunshan um and because you're interested in applying to our pathway 
therefore you are attending this talk. So the application timeline now um, is really like this. Um, we will be opening our portal for you to apply to us um, from the 1st of June. We will get a list from Duke Kunshan on those who are eligible. And um, we will then invite uh, individuals who are eligible to apply to us via our online, on our, via our online portal by mid-July, um, if we see that, you know, yes, indeed, you are um, applicable, uh, you are eligible, we will also invite you for the interviews. It's via Zoom, of course. Uh, we do not expect you to fly over to Singapore. Um, so the CA pathway um, interviews are conducted via Zoom in mid-July. All right. Um, following that, um, the consideration will take a few weeks and um, the offers will then go out only in August. You will hear from us in August and it will take us, um, a, uh, you will then need to come back to us whether you would want to accept the offer um, by, you know, two weeks after you've been offered. The welcome session will then start in September. Um, we will have activities starting in October, November following that. All right. So what is the entry requirement and um, for applying to this pathway as shown here? Um, you will first need to be successfully enrolled into Duke Kongshan, which I believe um, all of you are. Uh, you will also need to pursue your undergraduate studies in data science or global health biology at Duke Kongshan in your second year. All right, that is a must. I understand that um, your application is in the first year. In the event that you decided not to take um, data science or global health biology at Duke Kunshan your second year, unfortunately, we will need to drop you off. <laughs> yes, and you cannot continue with us on the pathway. But, but of course, you can still apply to us um, via the direct route. And the admission, I mean, the requirement is as per what Prof. we has mentioned. All right. Um, we will need to see an outstanding record of your um, leadership experience as well as community experiences. Um, and um, how do we understand if, you know, academically you qualify for our program is through your A-levels, your IB, okay, um, or your diploma results. Now, for Duke Kusha, I understand that most of you are not, um, uh, uh, will do your SATs. We would appreciate if you could submit your SATs because if you do not have any of the scores that are say, stated here, then we'll meet your SAT scores, okay, to make a comparison. Uh, once deemed eligible, we will then invite you for the interview. And the interview performance, how you perform during the interview, will actually also affect uh, whether uh, uh, you'll be eligible for the pathway as well. All right, so just bear in mind uh, these four. So what makes the pathway special? You know, why can't you just apply to us directly? You can, of course you can. Um, but of course, if you are on the pathway, what we will provide will be certain supplements for you to join us. Uh, when you join us as a student from our pathway, um, there will be a, clini a senior clinician who will be your mentor and who will guide you through your time when you are in Duke Kunshan. Okay. Um, we will have sessions like the team lead introduction session. Team lead is a is a session where you will be familiar with if you are with when you are with Duke Kunshan because I believe that's how they run certain sessions as well. Um, but of course, um, this will be more um, Duke and US focused. All right, it will introduce to you how sessions are being run when you join us. Uh, we will have medical specialty workshops that are held over Zoom. All right, and. Um, you know, DACO, which is the alumni clinician observation session, although because you're not with us um, in Singapore, this will only be conducted if you do come join us or when you do visit us when you're in Singapore. So let us know when you are here, okay, and we'll see what we can do about that. Um, we will have the MCAT advisory workshop um, that will happen in your first year. Um, and this is a very important uh, workshop that we hope to encourage everyone who is on the pathway to attend because that will build the scaffolding or the principles of how MCAT is being held and that will certainly help you when you do your MCAT examinations um, later on. Um, and progressing to MD, I believe Prof. We has already covered this portion, so I will not go further into that. Leaving us time to take on more questions and answers. Uh, it looks like you have a question. How many students will be admitted to this pathway? Um, thanks for the question. So what we're looking for is that um, 
as I mentioned in my talk earlier, there are two pathways into Duke NUS. And if you apply to the conditional Duke Kunshan Duke NUS pathway, uh, we will guide you along the process as what Lee has mentioned. But because it's a special pathway, we're keeping it to a very small group. So we're taking only 10 per year. So it's highly competitive. So if you do have the interest and you do have the potential, then apply. And we will go through and try and get you into the program as far as possible. If you're uncertain of your long-term directions, then don't apply yet. You can always apply to us after your time in Kunshan, in your final year in, in Kunshan, you can still apply to us directly. Uh, there's always an option available to you. So this pathway is only for those who at this point of time know that they want to do medicine already. And the new Kunshan time is a stepping stone to become a clinician plus, as I shared with you earlier. Okay, so think about it. Uh, we take in about 10 per year because it's highly selective. The class for due annuals is very, very small. We take in 72 a year only. So 10 to due Kunshan is a lot. Okay, it's, it's one seven of the class already. Yeah, and, and I'd also add that you do have other partnerships with other universities, so it really brings in an elite group of students to be a part of this cohort, um, you know, who come from different backgrounds and different education uh, experiences. Very, again, similar to kind of what we're trying to do at DKU, and I do want to just highlight something, uh, make sure everybody understood the piece about you know, making that commitment to either your data, our data science major or the global health biology track specifically. Um, and I think as was noted, you know, and our students know this, they don't have to declare their major officially until the end of their second year. But if you are pursuing this pathway um, and you apply and are accepted, that is the major you will have to dedicate yourself to, um, you know, a little bit earlier, make that commitment. Uh, but, but Russell, there's always a chance to drop out as Lee has suggested. So if you change your mind, there's no penalty for dropping out. Uh, That's right. If, That's right. Yeah. 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 There's no penalty if you decide because, you know, our students do come to explore and they do discover new interests and passions. And so they certainly may decide that they don't want to pursue that major. There is no penalty to you, um, to the student, if you decide to not pursue the pathway. And, and as was stated, you can always still come back and apply during the regular process to, to Duke NUS uh, Medical School, if you so choose. That's right, Russell. So I think that the message to the students here in the Zoom chat, uh, our priority is you, the student. So whatever we try to do for you, we will try and do if possible. So no penalty, do what you think is important to yourself. If you've got the passion, we'll try and guide you along the way. Okay. Uh, I see a question from Shaban uh, on the PhD program. So the PhD program, we do have several different modules available. Uh, and if you want to know more details of it, you can go into our website. Uh, if you do major in molecular biosciences, that's the most common one that we will take anyway. But we can take in things like computational science as well, because we do have a program of biostatistics and bioinformatics. So that's also possible, which is why we're asking you to do your computer science component in the Kunshan. Um, scholarships obviously are available. So if you are a student in the PhD component of it. The MD PhD program technically is tuition fee free. What happens is that you will pay your fees for the MD for the first two years. And when you enter the PhD program in the third year, we will reimburse your first two years MD fees back to you to ensure that you come into the PhD program. In our PhD years, there will be a stipend as well. And the stipend is a reasonable stipend that allows you to not worry about accommodation and so on so that you can focus on your projects. When you return to your final year after your PhD finishes, the last year of the MD program is also fee free, tuition fee free. So in essence, the MD PhD program is a commitment from the school. If you commit eight years to the program, we'll commit the funding to you. So I hope that uh, helps explain, Shaban. Uh, all right. So I just want to thank my colleagues for putting together such an informative uh, program to, to share this opportunity with our students. Um, so thank you, everybody, and have a wonderful rest of your day. Afternoon enjoy. Or enjoy. Evening. Thank, you. thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.